What up, Cucks? It's your boy, The Hater. And I'm here to basically re-record a video that I did and I subsequently lost, right? This video is about the ongoing battle between, I guess we'll just say, uh, Tony Khan and WWE, right? Now, obviously, nobody's on Tony Khan's side. Um, that's just a fact of life, right? And I'd like to point out that when everyone was on Tony Khan's side, I was basically the only one. There's a few other good ones. J Rants, Casual Q, you know what I mean? People were saying AW sucks, but I said it after the first episode. So I'm either first or one of the first to say it. And as far as I'm concerned, um, I'm basically now one of the people that said it first and is still talking about it. So there you have it. So I think my opinion, I'm not saying my opinion is worth more than anybody's. Nobody's opinion is worth more than anybody's. But my opinion about Tony Khan has remained consistent for a long time. However, as new facts get introduced, so do new opinions. I'm not saying that I like Tony Khan, but I will, I will be honest. I do like that he is going WWE uh, after WWE and that he is standing up for himself, if you will, right? You have Tony Khan and you have CM Punk, right? Fundamentally, CM Punk is a coward. Fundamentally, CM Punk is insecure. And fundamentally, CM Punk is a passive aggressive pussy and in this channel we don't like passive aggressive pussies go look at my other videos when i talk about other people and other wrestlers that's one of my biggest criticisms now with that being said cm punk goes on ariel hawani and ariel hawani naturally asks him hey what the hell happened in aw fair question cm punk then goes into his passive aggressive spiel where he pretty much lies through his through his teeth and there's another thing that the hater hates is a liar right now, okay, he described the events in the video. Clearly, the image that CM Punk portrayed is not what happened. Anyone who is honest knows that, right? Now, maybe you can stretch it and you can, you can say, oh, well, technically, you know, Jack Perry, like, could have said this to CM Punk and CM Punk was like, I can't let you get too close, even though CM Punk got up to his face, right? But the way that CM Punk made it sound was that Jack Perry aggressively approached him, right? Or that somehow Jack Perry was the aggressor. When the video shows that it's clearly CM Punk who's the aggressor, right? So, as a result, Tony Khan and the Young Cucks, they show this video, right? And everyone loses their mind. Everyone's like, wow, I can't believe they did this. They should just move on. Let me ask you something. Why the fuck should they? I can't believe I'm defending Tony Khan and AW. Why the fuck should they move on? You know what I mean? Like, CM Punk went on TV unprovoked, or not on TV, on YouTube, unprovoked and buried them, or tried to bury them, right? And it's like... Why the fuck do, do, do they owe an explanation to CM Punk? This is one of the worst things about this generation, which, you know, I mean, CM Punk is not part of it because he's like 100 years old, but, you know, he, he embodies this post-millennial generation, right? Like, he has this idea that everyone needs to be accountable to him. Like, at the end of the day, it's very strange. It's very strange because usually people that are like that, an ass-kicking or two, humble them. And, and CM Punk took two ass-kickings in the UFC, so, but he's still not humble. Like, he, he really still is a bully. It's, it's a, it's a fast, he's a fascinating dude for that. But basically, he expects Jack Perry to be accountable to him, right? And that's one of the things that I keep seeing on the comments of different videos, right? A lot of people are like, well, Jack Perry should have listened to CM Punk. Why the fuck should he? Who the fuck is CM Punk? And why the fuck should anyone listen to him, right? CM Punk comes in there with a bunch of opinions. He's like, Tony Khan isn't a boss. He's a nice guy. What the fuck? CM Punk has an opinion about everything, but this cocksucker has never ran a wrestling company, right? It's a lot harder than we think. Now, again, I don't really give a shit about Tony Khan. He's still a dork. That company is still like a fucking failure of a company like it's been since day one. But the truth is the truth, right? Let's say it like it is. The reality is that Tony Khan, um, at least this time, in my opinion, is in the right. The idea that he's supposed to just sit there and take continued harassment from CM Punk from a disgruntled employee is absurd. There's a random throwaway episode of Raw where Raw was supposed to be in Denver, right? And Denver unexpectedly made the playoffs, right? So they needed the arena for one of the games, right? Basically, they were double booked. The people that are in charge of the Denver Nuggets arena, this is in the past, of course, they didn't really understand that the Denvers were actually pretty good. So as a result, they, you know, didn't anticipate Denver being in the playoffs and rented out the arena to Monday Night Raw. Long story short, Raw had to relocate and Vince McMahon comes out and he cuts a promo or whatever. I don't remember like the guy's name, but I know that one of his names is Ennis, 
right? Or Enos or whatever, right? Because Mr. Glenn basically made fun of the fact that his name is Enos and it sounds like penis, right? So whatever, the owner of the Nuggets, this man comes out and just rips this guy apart, right? And this is just a business decision. But the idea is, why the fuck should Vince McMahon take that laying down, right? This is Vince McMahon. Now, I know Tony Khan's not Vince McMahon. Nowhere near it. But the idea stands. Why should Vince McMahon take the disrespect, right? Why should he take the inferior position? Now, while Tony Khan is clearly an inferior man compared to Vince McMahon, he is not clearly an inferior man compared to CM Punk. So the idea that Tony Khan cannot go out and say WWE is the Harvey Weinstein of fucking of wrestling, right? He, he's right, motherfucks. He's right. WWE is like scandals up up the ass, right? Like that's how it is, you know. For better or for worse, a lot of the things that Vince did, everyone knew about it. It's not like this. This shouldn't be, uh, you know, a surprise. Like to us, it might be a surprise because we're not part of the company. These are things that everyone would know, right? Based on the the the, the woman's complaint. But that's neither here nor there, right? He says something like that, and people will act like he fucking, you know, how could he say this? How could he do this? Well, WWE doesn't say anything about Tony Khan, but CM Punk does, right? People take digs at AEW all the time. People like me take digs all the time at AEW, right? And if, let's say, Tony Khan decides to quit doing AEW and instead makes a YouTube channel, and in that YouTube channel, he says, the hater is a piece of shit. Fuck this guy, he's a loser, right? I'd be like, hey, fair play to you, bro. I've been talking shit for years. Why wouldn't you be allowed to do the same thing, right? So this idea that reciprocity needs to end somewhere and someone has to be the bigger man is absurd. The hater comes from a culture where obviously things are different nowadays. But back in the day, we used to have blood feuds. I mean, this is like hundreds of years ago, but nevertheless, right? Blood feuds, right? If someone kills someone in your family, you have a a legal duty and a legal right to kill that person. You can't go around killing innocent people, right? Like, if Tony Khan decides to say, like, you know, well, fuck, you know, fuck Tyler Breeze, right? That's completely unrelated. He's talking about CM Punk. He's exposing CM Punk. And the idea that Tony Khan should ha- should focus on other things. But what about CM Punk? What the fuck does this asshole focus on? It sure as shit ain't wrestling because he's been injured. He's had one match. He's been back for, like, it's going to be like a year and the only thing he'll have done for this company is go into the Royal Rumble and get thrown out. That's it. The same thing that Chelsea Green did in like five seconds. That's all he's done for a year. So this idea that Tony Khan should, you know, take the the, the fisting from CM Punk and say, thank you, may I have some more, is absurd. No. You know, um, there's a great novel. Um, I I would say it's a personal favorite, but uh, it it really isn't. You know what I mean? It really isn't. Uh, It's called Things Fall Apart. A lot of people read it in high school in the United States. And it things things fall apart. The main character Okonkwo is like part of some African tribe, and he famously says, "If a man comes into your hut and defecates on the ground, do you invite him over again? No, you break a stick on his head, right? And that's what Tony Khan is trying to do. Now, granted, the execution is not great because at the end of the day, it's still Tony Khan. He's still a cuck, right? Nothing has really changed. But I admire the moxie. I admire the spirit." This idea that AW should accept their inferior position is absurd to me. Now, they are inferior, but let's be real, motherfucks. Let's be real. Prime TNA was drawing like 2.2 million. Like, Prime TNA was drawing more than Raw and AW combined. So, it's not like Raw is unreachable. Economically, they're unreachable, but economically, Tony Khan is richer than Triple H. So, I don't think he cares about that. They can, they can reach their viewership. It's not that hard, motherfucks. It's not that hard. Like... Today, my fiance and I watched an episode of Deal or No Deal Island. I guarantee that Deal or No Deal Island has far more viewership than Monday Night Raw. And honestly, far less production value, right? And, and, a, and a far smaller production budget. So it's not that hard. You know what I mean? It's really not that hard, uh, you know, to, to beat Raw. So the idea that AW can't do it is silly. Now, AW is never... Going, look, I just Googled it, motherfucks. Deal or No Deal Island hits 24 million viewers. <laughs> the end, motherfucks. 24 million viewers, Deal or No Deal Island gets, right? Meanwhile, Raw can barely scrape together 1.4. You know, like, now, I know that I read the article that said 24 million viewers. I'm sure there's some weird, you know, counting of, of some sort. Like, probably they're, you know, they're combining the Peacock views and the TV views and the DVR views. But nevertheless, WWE can do that, too, in many ways. So, you know, they're obviously, even if... It was half of that, even if it's 10 million, 
right? They're outdrawing WWE. Like, like it's easy to to outdraw WWE. Like reruns of fucking Seinfeld outdraw WWE. Reruns of every sitcom ever outdraw WWE. So the idea that AEW is supposed to just take this inferior position is just silly. You know what I mean? And I actually am proud of Tony Khan, who I thought sucks ass forever. I'm proud of the fact that he's out there at least trying, right? The I actually like this this push towards Tony Khan as an on-screen guy, right? Because he's playing something that works, an exaggerated version of himself. He's a nice guy cuckold, and he's playing the nice guy cuckold that's getting destroyed by uh, the young cucks who are pretty much taking the company from him. I really like this, you know? And quite frankly, when it comes down to who I think is more valuable for wrestling, CM Punk or Tony Khan, the answer is obviously Tony Khan. At the end of the day, motherfucks, let's not forget two things. Number one, if it weren't for Tony Khan, we wouldn't have like 50% of the wrestling that we have today, even though it's shit, right? It does push the ball forward. He's giving jobs to people. And number two, more important than that garbage TV show called AW Dynamite, if it weren't for Tony Khan, we wouldn't have the hater. So there you have it, cucks. Take that, bitches.